Hello everyone and welcome back to Stuck in Yonder, a visual novel. We are going to be going through the survival route of um, the game, so hey, I uh, hope you guys are up for that. Uh, let's not say anything. I feel a little bad since he's being genuine. It's nothing. Just got some troubles with, uh... I'm just nervous about Valentine's Day, that's all. Oh, I see. You got a day for Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> well, have fun then. Thanks. If only he knew. What are you so nervous for? They're bound to like you. That's exactly what I'm worried about. Big bro. Just be honest and be yourself. Right. This is great news though. I was starting to worry that my older brother was going to be single forever. Huh? Well, excuse me. Where's your Valentine's date? Right here. I'm gonna watch a movie with myself and read my own fortune. I... what? <laughs> Good night, big bro. Have fun on your date. He walks out of the living room, and I hear his bedroom door close. Be honest, huh? Oh, it's easier if I just text him the truth, right? That feels ingenuine. Huh? Does sincerity even matter right now? Just tell him in person. What's the worst that could happen? It's not like they'll work together to kill me, right? To make it clear, though, I do text both of them, indicating they'll be meeting up both of them at the, at the exact same time. I've read enough shoujo manga to know that the more information, the better. Frick! Why are they calling me now? After an hour of complaints and very angry messages thrown at each other in the group chat, I finally got them to calm down. I decided to stick to my word and only tell them tomorrow. I hope this wasn't a mistake. I find a secluded hallway in our maze of a school and turn to face both of them. They're already glaring and baring their teeth at each other. At least they'll probably try to kill each other before they kill me. Let's get this over with. Hey. Yeah? What is it, honey? The truth is, I have a date with both of you on Saturday. Uh. Huh? Why? Well, tell me to want to go out with him. I'm pretty sure I asked you first. How are you so sure of that? Even if you're right. If he wanted to go out with you, he would have agreed to go on a date with me afterwards. Wait, don't kill each other. Hey, stop it. Don't even... Both of them turned to glare at me. Something tells me I can't reject a date from either of them. Well, which is it? Who do you want to spend your Valentine's Day with? Hello? Game? Choices? Uh, well... I stuttered, my eyes shifted back and forth between the two of them, waiting for the game to respond with choices that never come. Huh? What am I supposed to do? Go on a date with both of them? Oh god, no. It's not seriously, right? I... I don't want to say no to either of you. <laughs> it's an easy question to answer. Who do you like better? I dislike you both equally. <laughs> Actually, I hate Vincent more. You wouldn't happen to want to go on a three-way date. Mm. No. Mm. Hell no. How about I go on two separate dates with each of you? They don't say anything but glance at each other angrily. It seems like we're getting somewhere. Unfortunately. <laughs> Come on. It's not like I'm actually dating either of you. Some people go on multiple dates in one day. Aww. This is a disaster. What kind of frick boy would... True. Huh? Wait, are you serious? I guess you've never been on a date with either of us. Uh. Really? Even though you've been friends for so long. Okay. So you can pick who you want to date after going out with each of us. This is really a situation that can only happen in a video game. Because in real life, you're going to be jumped by both. <laughs> you really think you can't even compare? Hmm. I'm going to kill you. You can try. Hey, stop! No killing! No death! No death even though I have died three times so far! But I'm fine with this. Are you? Okay. I wouldn't suggest something I don't agree on. Uh. Right. I'm not ecstatic, but if it's a competition, I'll definitely win. Okay, in that case, I'll go on a date with Leon in the morning and the date with Vincent in the afternoon. Fine. I can agree to that. Wow, this is going better than I expected. Then I can go out with Rem in the evening! Holy heck! <laughs> can I go on a date with three people in one day? I want to! God! Freaking love Rem. Great. I'm going to class now. Thankfully, they actually step aside and let me pass. I walk off without looking back at them. I don't want to know what's going on in their heads with the new information. I don't even want to guess. I'm just going to pray that I can make it Saturday. And then survive Saturday. Huh. Is it going on the next day? To my surprise, the day passes by uneventfully. No one poisons, tries to kidnap, kiss, or even cabot on me. 
It's almost like the regular high school life I remember. These yandere's were really well behaved. Too well behaved. Aww. If I didn't already know of the upcoming final game event, I'd be much more anxious. But I know for sure this is the calm before the storm. I can save all my anxiety for tomorrow. I take a breath and lean back on my chair, finish with my homework for the day. My eyes drift to the date box in the bottom half of my vision. Huh? Wow, I've really have been here for nearly two weeks. Can't say I've gotten used to living this life, but I'm starting to forget about my old one. There's not much to be missed about my old life. Hmm. Like, except for the peace of mind, I suppose. But honestly, would you prefer a life of loneliness or a life of chaos? Oh. Eh, I prefer a life of loneliness. Wait, what? Why was that a choice? Huh? Who was that asking? No matter. I need to focus on surviving this before I focus on getting answers. Well... Are we moving on to the next date? Am I really going on a date with two people? Holy frick, it's Valentine's Day! What? I prepare myself with all the things I need for the date. Huh. <laughs> My brother was willing to lend me his favorite pocket knife. Coincidentally, it was a gift from Leon. Why is he giving a kid knives as a present? <laughs> Rem stayed after school to teach Moria and me how to increase the pain of pepper spray purchased on the streets. And John taught me a few ways to juke someone during a date. I don't want to know why he has this very specific skill. I also ran into my doctors at a pharmacy store when buying bandages and aspirin, and it gave me some recommendations. Like the maximum amount of painkillers I can consume without getting acute kidney failure. Huh? Is that doctor okay? Hmm. There's still one thing missing. What's missing? Why is every outfit in my closet exactly the same? It's not like I expect a new outfit to magically appear in the closet, but this is a video game. Do I, have to? I thought getting Isekai might make things slightly more realistic, but I guess a limited budget truly is a limited budget. It's fine if it's clean. At least it would pass for a date outfit. As I finish packing everything I need, the doorbell rings. I open the door to Leon standing nervously outside. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Do you want to come in? No. Uh. Oh. Unless you're ready to go. No. Nah, nah. I'm ready. Going on any date? My brother peeks out from the bedroom door, causing both of us to jump. Oh. It's not... I mean, well, it is. <laughs> Have fun. Door closes behind us, and we walk awkwardly out into the street. I finally get a good look at Leon. There's a flush practically permanently painted on his face. Aww. Looks like I was right about the limited budget. Leon's also dressed the exact same outfit as usual. Ooh. <sighs> Wait, what do I care? Um, yeah. I don't have any fancy chauffeur like Vincent does. I did call a car service. That's no problem at all. They most kind of scare me, actually. Oh. Really? Yeah, so car service sounds much more comfortable. We chatted for a bit outside my house as the car arrives and we get in. A short ride and it's true. I'm much more comfortable with a car service. Rather, I'm comfortable because it's not Vincent calling for a cab. So no matter what, I feel like they're all his hired muscle trying to kidnap me. Oh god, I hope I won't have to deal with that later. But here, you're excited. I get out of the car and I'm greeted with sleek, modern glass doors and windows. Metal cutouts in the shape of dolphins and wave lights the path towards the building. Even in February, perfectly manicured evergreen shrubs decorate the path in the side of the building. And since it's Valentine's Day, heart decorations are placed between the shrubs for color. Each with a cute sea-based quote like, You should know seahorses mate for life. Ugh. So cute! It's even better to see in real life. Ugh. So happy I live to see this for real. Always wanted a date in an aquarium. I can't wait to see the cute fishes. Will there even be sharks? Or octopi? Can't wait to see the mantis shrimp. <laughs> I've already bought the tickets. You're ready to go. Oh, yeah! Leon walks ahead to the admission booth. I follow behind, feeling a bit dejected. Got so excited, I forgot I should be fighting for my life here. Is there anything in particular you want to see first? No. Not really, but I remember what they have here. Are there are live shows here. Huh? Mm. Something wrong. Your tickets aren't going through. Hmm. What? Well, why not? Did you buy these today? <laughs> no, yesterday, online. It's not going through. The receptionist continues to scan the printout. Leon handed her with no avail. Mm. What do you mean they're not going through? I paid for them yesterday. You can see the date printed down here. 
Yeah, but it seems like these tickets aren't valid. Leon slams his fist on the counter of the ticket booth. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I paid for them. Um, then the machine wouldn't... I didn't steal them. If I did, it wouldn't be two freaking tickets to an... Hey, it's fine. Why don't I buy some new tickets? Oh. Well, no, I already paid for the tickets. It's fine. I don't mind paying. <laughs> no way. I'm taking you out on a date, so there's no way you're paying. I... All right, but... You're going to pay for new tickets again? No. He glares at the receptionist and he jumps. I already paid for the tickets. I'm not letting him rip me off for it. Uh, what am I supposed to do here? Uh... God. Le the insist that you'll pay. Ah! Leon, it's fine, I'll pay. So the tickets will be a bit more expensive, but it's not like we're hurting for money. It's not that. <laughs> fine, I'll pay for new tickets. Huh? He still looks upset, but he seems to have calmed down enough. Wait, is he hurting for money? I have no idea what our families do for a living after all. Ah! Leon, it's totally all right if I pay. You can cover lunch later. I was already going to do that. If you buy tickets now, it's all right. I'm prepared enough for something like this. He turns back to the receptionist. Although his expression is calm now, there's still a hard edge to his voice. Can I purchase two tickets then? Oh, of course! Even if I can't make out his full expression, I can see the blue shadow representing him shake as he types on a computer and prints two new tickets for us. Leon takes them and walks off without a word. I give him an apologetic smile and follow Leon. We're off to a great start. The interior of the aquarium immediately engulfs us in dim light. The crowd of people. Looks like this is a popular destination for Valentine's Day. Is there anything we want to see first? Let's make our way through the room before moving on to the other ones. Hey, if I'm going to be treated to a date, might as well see everything. <laughs> Alright. The assortment of colorful fishes swim across the tank. Based on the signpost next to the glass, they seem to be from the Caribbean. This tank has seahorses clinging onto st stringy coral with their tails. Wow, they put a lot of decor into the tank. Hmm. Any seahorses made for life. If one of them dies, the other one dies soon afterwards. Huh? From heartbreak? Uh... Maybe. I was just reading the sign. For a second, I thought you did some research into seahorses. <laughs> oh. If you like them, I'll certainly look up more information on them for you. Huh? Oh, what? There's no need for that. Okay, but if you like something, let me know. We'll find out more information about it for you. Hmm. It sounds like a threat. There's something written on that decorative rock. Which one? The heart-shaped one to the left. Please turn around uh, with your special someone. Huh? Turn around. What? On cue, both of us turn to look behind us as a flash causes me to jump and crash into Leon. Huh? Happy Valentine's Day! Huh? Uh, what? I rub my eyes in an attempt to readjust my eyes to the dim light faster. When I do, however, I realize I'm still clinging on to Leon, my face buried in his chest. My brain short circuits for a moment, and I stay frozen against Leon. Oh my god, I missed my chance to let go. I'm not sure I want to see his, his expression right now. Finally, after several heartbeats, I managed to mutter out an apology. <laughs> Sorry. It, it's fine. <sighs> Cautiously, I lift myself off of him, making sure I'm well balanced so I don't face plant back onto him. Sneaking a glance up at Leon, he quickly turns, but his bright red ears don't hide anything. So I'm sure I don't look any less like a tomato t than him. Nah, how cute. Aww. Cute? Okay, yeah, it's cute to see this happen, but this is embarrassing. Why can't you be like that? Uh, sorry, bro. Here you go. Would you like to purchase a copy? Employee shows a picture of us. Aww. Damn, I look horrible. Not only am I clinging onto Leon for dear life, my eyes are wide with shock and I appear to be caught in a half scream. This doesn't look like a Valentine's Day date souvenir after all. I think it's fine. Huh? Leon? Oh. Can I have five co- <laughs> Oh my god! Leon, god damn it! I know you love me, but what the heck? Five! What do you need five for? Of course. We can also print it for keychains, mouse pads, and mugs. Really? How much is it for? Why would you need that image on a mug? I try not to feel too disturbed by this turn of events. This is the most tame as tendencies have been. 
The impulse is the employee to another booth and I trail behind. <laughs> I wait to the side while they talk. I feel like I'm watching a terrorist trap. While he's busy doing that, my eyes drift to the other tanks in the room. Leon won't mind if I take a look at some of the other fishes before him, will he? I start through the crowd towards one of the tanks. Ah. As a tight squeeze through all the people, but I managed to make a path through. Finally. Now! Just made it through the thickest part of the crowd to the front of the tank when someone runs past me, shoulder checking me hard enough to make me stumble. I managed to catch my footing just in time to see a blue blur disappear into the crowd. Aww. What the? At least apologize! And I get to vent my frustrations before the same blue blur gets slammed through the crowd back into my view and into the wall of the tank. Yeah! What the? Let go of me! Ah. Leon? You just walked into him. Huh? What? What? Apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry! What are you looking at me for? I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Maybe I should give him a Batman voice. <laughs> ah! Leon, stop! I run up to them and tug at Leon's arm, trying to get him to unhand a blue shadow. <laughs> he ran into you and didn't say anything! <laughs> Okay, okay, that's the only time I'm giving him the Batman voice. Yeah, that was rude, but there's no need for this. Seriously, it didn't even hurt that much. Leon glares at the man and presses him harder into the wall. You ran into it so hard, it hurt him! No! Leon, for the love of God, stop! Not until he apologizes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Mm. You don't sound genuine. I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> what the hell does Leon consider genuine? I think this counts as assault! Leon, stop. You're gonna kick us out if you keep this up. That seemed to do the trick. Leon's expression immediately changes to one of fear. And he lets go of the man's collar. The man sinks to the ground while Leon does an embarrassed sweep of the surroundings. The surrounding crowd has stopped in their tracks to watch what has been happening. Oh. Sorry, I uh... He looks at the ground, horrified and taking breaths, as he avoids the eyes of everyone around us. Um... I will reassure him. Hey, Leon. It's okay. It's fine. Oh. I... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I turn him away from the crowd, hopefully to focus his attention on the attractions in the room instead. Mm. Yeah, I know it's fine. Nobody got hurt. The guy on the floor still seemed a bit dazed, and the crowd is more focused on making sure He's alright, but no one died. Everything is fine. In fact, it's better. Everyone is avoiding us now, so it's easier to walk through the aquarium now. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I must hate being here right now. No. Eh, not at all. Yeah, I must hit that reflexively. We can still have fun today. Uh... Even though back then, the two of us were... He trails off and looks away, deep grind down on his bottom lip. Huh? Back then? Back when? Why is he being so vague? His grip suddenly hides on my head, and his eyes won. His next words filled with desperation, despite his demand. Oh. Don't leave. <laughs> no, I won't! I promise! I'll spend time with you today, so... No, I mean, don't leave. You can't leave. You said you won't. Huh? Well, what's he talking about? I didn't even mention anything about leaving. No. And he said, I won't leave. Maybe referring to something that happened before the game. No. No way, right? That visual novel was a fully contained story. There wasn't any information about what happened before. Oh no, please. Please don't ask in detail about what we're talking about. I don't have the faintest idea how to play that part. Leon, I won't leave. Distract. I need to distract him somehow. I let out a sigh. I wrap my free hand around his shoulders. Let's do this before I overthink and back out. I pull him down as much as I can to make up for the rest of the distance by balancing myself on my toes. Why does he have to be so tall? Oh, what the heck? And press my lips against his. Oh. That seems to do the trick. His grip lessens on my hand, and once he gets over the initial shock, he wraps his arms around me and kisses back. After a few heartbeats, I relax my hold on his shoulders and part from him. Hmm. I won't leave you, okay? He nods and keeps his hand wrapped around me. His eyes drift down to my lips. He wants another kiss, huh? It wasn't my intention to start a makeout session in front of the public. A single extra kiss probably isn't a problem. Both of us paused, caught by a loud splash of water from seemingly nearby. Oh. Oh my god! A woman nearby screams and points towards us. 
Can't make out her expression, but the shrill in her voice is enough to make me jump away from Leon. What? How'd he get in there? Someone call an employee! Uh, what? Who? Both of us whip around to the tech behind us. My jaw drops as a black shadow of a man floats behind the glass as the fish are scattered from him and the bubbles start to obscure the tank. <laughs> Holy frick! It takes several steps back as several employees rush across the room, yelling in panic as they start going into staff rooms to the back of the building to help the man out. Aww. Uh, let's get out of here. Yeah, sure. We distance ourselves as much as possible from that tank. It takes a bit of effort, but I managed to convince Leon to focus on seeing the other fishes within the aquarium, rather than focusing on everything that just happened past hour. I have my thoughts on what's happening, but I do my best not to think about it. If I don't choose to enjoy this, I might do something I'll regret later. It looks like the scene land show is about to start. We've gone through most of the exhibits on the map, so this will be a good way to end the date. It'll also give me some time to prepare for the next one. I flinch from the sudden assault of light on my eyes as I open the door of the aquarium. What the? Hmm. Something wrong. <gasps> Something wrong? Something wrong? The whole world is just a sketch. The background. Background. It looks around in confusion and frowns worriedly at me. He can't see it. My eyes finally adjust to change in the static. My brain needs to catch up to provide much needed logic. Aww. Right. I'm in a video game. Anything can happen, including walking to an area with an unfinished background. I can't remember. Was there only one room to explore in the original game? This has never... I can't believe this happened. Are you alright? I'm fine, I'm fine. Sorry to see the sea lions. I need to get out of here before I go blind. I'll go get us some snacks. Yeah, wait. I trail off as I turn to find a blob after blob of dark shadows around me. Huh? Leon. Everywhere I look, there are faceless side characters that make up the crowd. Not a sign of pink anywhere. Huh? Oh no, that lose Leon. Wait, that's possible? Hmm. For a split second, consider enjoying this peace I temporarily have. But to just ditch your date is pretty terrible. Besides, if he's frantically looking for me, he might spell trouble to the other people here. Huh? People. They are people, right? I can't really explain it, but I've never really been able to see them as fake. <sighs> that either way, I've been forcing myself to think of everything as code. Hmm. What am I saying? Of course it's code. It's a video game I've woken up in. Ah, uh, there's a feeling again. Something gripping painfully in my head. Something I'm forgetting. Wait, what is it? He's shaking my head. Oh. Stop it. I can't think about it right now. I'm gonna text Leon to ask where he is. So I walk as I type out a message for Leon. I do my best to shift between the black shadows in my peripheral vision, and thankfully, they all seem to want to avoid the teenager glued to his phone. I hit send and... Oops. What? Oh, sorry. Huh? huh? <laughs> hey, honey. What a coincidence. <laughs> Vincent! Why are you here? Aww. Why? I even need to ask why. I knew it. I knew he was here. In an unfinished part of the game, no less. His lips spread into a sly grin. He knows very well what I've guessed and isn't afraid to hide it one bit, huh? I'm not even upset. I saw this coming. So it was all you? Hmm. I don't know what you talk about. You know I'd do anything for you. Invalidating a ticket, throwing a man into the aquarium, like deleting a part of the world. How and why did you push a guy in the tank? Vincent shrugs and looks away. It was the first thing I thought to do. What is wrong with this man? Like, I know he's yandere, but... What? <laughs> well, since your date with Junkyard filling is over, why don't we prepare ours? Hmm. Whose date is over? <laughs> Vincent crosses his arms as Leon storms up to us. Yours? What are you even doing here? He doesn't wait for an answer and swings a fist towards Vincent. <laughs> Oh my god, hey, stop! I'm cause a scene here! <laughs> uh. No. Vincent, I'm going to pretend we didn't meet you here as a coincidence. You said you were okay with going on a date with me later. Uh. Yeah, but I'm not gonna stand around if you're kissing other men. Uh. Oh, of course he saw that too. So what if I do? It's not like we're dating. The agreement was that I'd choose who I'd date after go on a date with each of you. 
I keep this up and I won't go on a date with you at all. Hmm. Oh, no way, you promised. Yeah, well, I'm allowed to change my mind if you tick me off. Honey, see you later, Vincent. A dangerous glint flashes in Vincent's eyes. My gas going weak to the knees. Where the hell did all my confidence from before go? Hell, where did all that confidence come from? He reaches out to take my wrist and I automatically take a step back. <laughs> you promised me. Well, you're breaking the agreement. If you break the agreement, the contract should be way over. He pauses as Leon grabs his arm and steps between us. <laughs> Screw off, Vincent. Let go of me. He tugs himself free from Leon. Don't scare me one bit, Vincent. No. Stop. What did I say about making a scene? Also, what's up with that scope just now? Seriously, Vincent, if you don't want un if you don't wait until our date later, I won't go on a date with you at all. My threat seems to finally make him reconsider his actions. Mm. Fine. We'll see you later. With dramatic turn, he walks away and disappears into the crowd. Ooh. Breathes out a sigh of relief. The sound of cheering breaks me out of my stupor. It's like we missed the sea lion show completely. Of course. I don't think I have the optimism to go see it now anyways. Mm. You okay? Mm. Yeah. How are we doing on time? You could stay with me. You don't need to go on a date with Vincent. No. What? No, the deal was that I go out with both of you. I come back out on that now. Especially after the conversation. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to. Aren't you having enough fun with me? Mm. The question is a trap. Even if I have fun, I don't want to re renegade on my promise. Renish? Renegade? There's a reason Vincent isn't afraid of you, but I'm afraid of what it might be. Leon could kill someone with his bare hands, but Vincent has the power of money. Come on, I still have an hour or so before I have to get going. I think we can get a late lunch and then check out the gift shop. Hey! Hey, did you have a good time on your date? You like dolphins? Uh huh? Huh? I had a giant dolphin plush. Oh, it's so cute! Should you really be giving this to me? Let's leave it in the living room. Um... Okay. I'm going to take a shower before Vincent gets here. <laughs> he laughs saying, gives the stuffed dolphin a hug. He clearly has no idea the tightrope by a walk today. Fun, big bro. You have to shower and change of clothes. Yeah, I should have about 40 minutes to recoup before my date with Vincent. <sighs> what a relief I didn't have to use any of the weapons I prepared for self-defense. Hopefully I'll continue to not have to. Huh? It can't be him, right? He's over half an hour early. My brother beats me to the door, and sure enough, Vincent is standing at the doorway. Vincent! You're early! Hmm. I couldn't wait. You ready to go? Well, I suppose I am. Aww. Physically ready. Not sure mentally prepared, though. Then let's go. Huh? We're going for dinner first, right? Did you put me... Did you put in a reservation? Hmm. Some change of plans. I had a better idea this morning. But, gotta get the keys. Huh? Keys. You are not driving me. My mouth keeps threatening to drop open the longer I stay in here. Never in my life did I expect to be able to stand in such a luxurious living space. To my right, I can see the city skyline, perturbed here, and there are only by other skyscrapers that try to compete with this one. There's a clear view of the bridge where the people look like ants below us. Mm. Still try to process the fact that I took an elevator up 90 flights to a penthouse. I heard last night that my uncle was in town, so he probably won't be using it now that he's settled in. Huh? This isn't even your uncle's primary residence? Please. Of course not. You think he can settle for an apartment this tiny? Ah! How wealthy is his family? Come with me. He's in his office. Uh, uncle, I'm here to borrow it. Huh? Borrow what? Oh, he has a Sprite. Uh-huh. It's parked on the roof. Hmm. Wow, he looks just like Vincent. Are they really only uncle and nephew? I mean, heck, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the dad is not actually the dad and this is his daddy-o. The man sitting behind the desk has the same curly hair and sharp eyes as Vincent. Even their attire is reminiscent of each other. Is this how Vincent will look in 20 years? This guy only has attractive wrinkles. I should ask them for their skin care routine. Huh? Wait, did he have a sprite in the game? Can't remember. There was the main character, the three love interests, the protagonist's younger brother. Huh? Why am I able to see him completely? I don't think I've met any of Vincent's relatives when playing the game. In fact, there was no mention of the character's families. 
You. Why are you here? Mm. Oh, he's my date. Uh. Vincent wraps an arm around me and pulls me towards him. I almost lose my footing in the process. Aww. Come on, man. I don't want to fall on my face in front of your dilf of an uncle. Who may or may not have something to do with my isekai. His uncle sucks in a breath and rubs his temples. Vincent, can I talk with you? Mm. Sure. Alone. Vincent frowns, his brows furrowing in confusion. Mm. All right. Could you wait for me outside? Sure. A step away from him, he pulls me back and presses a kiss to my forehead. Thanks, honey. Mm. Personal freaking space! I hold back from saying anything and nod and force a smile instead before leaving the room. Huh? Well, that was weird. Wonder what he has to talk about with Vincent. I glance out at the ceiling to floor like the windows. The sun is starting to set. What a day it's been. Am I actually surviving this Valentine's Day? Amazing. Would you like something to drink? <laughs> oh! I jump at the sun question and do my best to laugh it off when a blue shadow frowns at me. Sorry. <sighs> it's alright. You just startled me. I seriously never thought I'd meet someone in this modern day who's rich enough to hire a maid. I'm alright. Thanks. She nods and disappears into one of the other rooms in the apartment. What the heck? The sound of glass being smashed reverberates through the hallways out into the entryway. For a brief moment, I thought the maid might have dropped something, but the sound is followed by a muffled yelling between two men. Huh? Vincent. I'm gonna go check on him. I make my way back to the office again. My hand on the doorknob, I'm now close enough to hear what they're yelling at each other. It's still a little muffled, but I can make out the sentences. Ugh. What the? You're not my dad! Even if you are, who the hell are you to tell me who I can date? I don't care who you date, as long as it's not him. It can't be anyone else. And why the heck not? The voices drop to a soft muffle, and I can no longer make out what they're saying. Even the text box isn't helping. Hmm. The game really doesn't want me to know. Seriously? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Screw off! Vincent yells at his uncle before turning to see me. He pauses before stuttering. Mm. Did, did you hear that? No. I... Not really. I look past him and... To see his uncle glare at me and immediately duck back behind Vincent. Aww. I've got two yandere's on my tail. I don't need a third homicidal maniac. Seriously, why does he look like he wants to kill me? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Let's just go. Vincent grabs my wrist and drags me out of the room. I can't help sneaking a glance back at his uncle. What? What? Helicopter? He wants me to ride a helicopter with him? I look back and forth between the aircraft and Vincent, trying to determine if I'm the only one that finds this incredible. Of course he's unfazed. <laughs> what do you think? We're going to ride a helicopter. Yeah, the sun's setting, so this is the perfect time. Huh? Can you... Can you fly a helicopter? Mm. I can if you want me to. Ah! This has to be the first time I've ever been glad this is a yonder visual novel and not a thriller. I never want to hear those words before I board a helicopter. <laughs> you do have a certified pilot, right? Mm. Yeah, but I can still fly it if I want. No. No. <laughs> Even my character agrees and no, he should not be flying. He barely has a license. I board a helicopter of him. Never been on one, so... I'm actually a bit excited. The helicopter lifts up with a sudden jerk, and I grab onto Vincent's arm in surprise. I hear him chuckle as I try to settle myself as the aircraft hovers in the air before raising itself higher and higher. What do you think? At this point, I hesitantly take a glance through the side window of the helicopter. The sounds of the whirling blades become distant as I had taken the sides before me. Up and up, you go higher. But it was still close enough to make out the little cars on the streets and the people leaning on expensive balconies, all bathed in a fiery shade of orange from the setting sun. At this distance, the city with all its skyscrapers and millions of people looked like a carefully crafted and perfectly detailed diorama. I want to reach out and run through each alley. I can't help smiling as I turn back to Vincent, all my butterflies and anxiety chased away. This... it's incredible. The view from the penthouse apartment doesn't even begin to compare to this. He smirks back at me and keeps a protective arm around my waist. Be careful now. Don't fall out. 
Yeah, I won't. We got seatbelts in. I almost said I won't fall out because he's holding on to me. Come on, that's too cheesy. Even if it was true. Based on that grin he has on his face, he's already guessed my thoughts and he's taken pride in it. Still, it is a date. We're flying over the city at sunset. I lean my head on his shoulder and smile up at him. Hmm. Have you a good time? Sure am. To my surprise, he averts his eyes, but keeps his arms around me, holding me tight against him. Huh. <laughs> I'm expecting something so simple could make him speechless. We chat casually as the helicopter makes a few rounds around the city. The sun is almost past the horizon and the world is bathed in a dim blue glow instead. Vincent signals the pilot. Oh, you can land here. We land moments later. Oh. Vincent jumps off first, then helps me jump down by lifting me by the waist. Gentlemanly, I guess. The helicopter flies off, after we're safely on the rooftop. Where's he going? Mm -hmm. Probably back to my uncle's apartment. I didn't see the point in him waiting for us all night. All night? All night? How long is he planning for a dinner date to be? Come on, the restaurant is downstairs. Uh, okay. I still feel like this is a tra- ah! Wait. Purple and yellow bears? Jesus. Wait, what does this mean? This is too fancy for me. Also, if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, didn't we mention that there's a purple and yellow bear, like, over in our brother's bedroom? Like, I feel like that's an omen for something. This is too fancy for me. Once again, the, the restaurant has a top floor view of the entire city, even if it isn't as high as his uncle's apartment. The marble floors were so polished, I could see my own reflection in it. The walls are trimmed in gold, paint that makes me feel like I'm standing in the Louvre instead. All that seems to be missing are the famous works of art framed within the walls and ceiling. Instead, they appear to have opted for a white, minimalistic aesthetic, creating a high-class blend of vintage and modern. Video game or not, it's the most expensive restaurant I've ever set foot in. Aww. Seriously, the waiter's uniform looked more expensive than any suit I've ever owned. Hello, I have a reservation for two at six. Vincent! Yes. Right away, sir. Ah! Wait, Vincent! I pull him over to whisper in his ear. Um, I'm not dressed for this. There aren't many guests in the restaurant, but every one of them is dressed in what gives off the feel of designer suits and dresses. Or at least, it feels that way against the backdrop of a clean, minimalistic aesthetic. Aww. I try my best, but with my windblown hair and faded shirt that had been worn uncountable times in the past decade, no matter how nice it is, it still doesn't begin to compare. Heck. How does Vincent still look so perfect despite flying on the helicopter? Video game logic, I'm guessing. A single strand of hair looks out of place and his clothes are still perfectly adjusted. A single wrinkle from sitting. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about that. But everyone else is dressed so nicely. Sure. They're not. Huh? huh? What do you mean? I think I see an... Blank suit! I got copyright blocked again? Mm -hmm. So? You still look better. No. Stop that! To my dismay, he laughs and takes my hand towards a table towards the back. Come on, let's see. Yeah, let's. Mm. Being considered attractive is still a rather foreign concept for me. Huh? That was probably the most expensive meal I've ever had, yet why do I still feel hungry? As we walk out of building, I can't help hoping there's more to this date. I'm still hungry. Wait, there should be if I remember correctly. You ready to go? Yeah. Oh no, it's not more food right away, but I see food stands with hot chocolate and other high calorie treats. Ah! Thank God! Do you know how to skate? Uh, did it once when I was 15. <laughs> oh, it's not too long ago. No. No comment. I struggle to lace up my skates and look over to find Vincent ready. Hmm. Do you need some help? No. Ah, I can lace shoes. Okay. Hmm. As soon as I see that, my vision starts blurring the moment I lay my fingers near the skates. Huh? What? Why? I blink and look away, finding everything clear once more. Heck, even if I pull my hands away, everything clears up. Aww. This... This is a game screwing with me, isn't it? No! Why? Stop being a helpless klutz! It's not romantic! <sighs> Finally, I let out a sigh of defeat. Mm. Can I get some help? Can't even lay shoes. Vincent lets out a laugh as he walks back over and bends down to help me lace him properly. What is going on? 
This is so silly. I can lace my own shoes. But I'd be lying if I said this was... I wasn't a bit enamored by this angle. I feel like the princess. There you go. Ready to go? Um, He holds a hand out to me. After a moment of consideration, I take it. The game mechanics are going to make me trip over the air otherwise. Hmm. The moment I set foot on the ice, I regret it. 15 years old? What's over half a decade ago for me? On top of that, I'm pretty sure the game mechanics are making it harder for me to balance on the blades. Huh. Huh. You're right. No! No! Don't let go of me! <laughs> no. Alright. If you insist. I grip onto his hand for dear life, feeling a strange sense of reverse deja vu. As I do my best to focus on standing atop thin ice, Vincent suddenly gives me a pull, causing me to tumble into his arms. <laughs> Vincent? If you're going to hold on to me, this is the best way, right? As I hug and lean into him, he glides easily across the ice, not even needing to look as he avoids other skaters. It's completely second nature for him to do something so graceful and pull along so easily, even able to dare pick my feet up occasionally to actually skate along rather than being a fawn on uneasy legs. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. He smirks at me, I can't help wondering how anyone can be so perfect at this, whatever this is, whatever it is, manipulator or otherwise, it's hard not to enjoy or want it. Ooh. Come on, it's the last event and I'm still alive, things are going well, it's okay to enjoy it, right? Before I can second guess myself, I relax myself against him, burying my face in his chest. I let out a soft chuckle. The main character is built perfectly for his size, huh? Hmm. Even in the chilly winter weather, Vincent is nice and warm. Trusting him to keep me balanced, I pull my arms up to strain up against him. Thanks. For tonight. Vincent slows his glide across the ice, his attention on me, and for the first time, I spot some hesitation in him. The way his fingers drum lightly against my arm in his indecision for whether now is the time. It's cuter than I expected. I can't help giving him a mischievous grin of my own. Mm. What? Hey, yo! Oh! <laughs> Rather than answering, I bring myself up to kiss him. The moment our lips touch, a switch flips in him. Any uncertainty he had before was gone. I definitely wanted to kiss him as much as he wanted to kiss me. He pulls me into the kiss hands pressing against my back to hold me tight against him. Part of me is aware that we're kissing in a very public place. But then again, everyone just looks like a blue shadow to me. I can't even see their eyes. Besides, I'm the main character in a visual novel. Might as well embrace everything that comes with it, now that everything is pretty much over. Right? From the corner of my eyes, I spot a non-blue shadow. Oh no, that's... I pat Vincent's arms, telling him to stop. What? Ah! Duck! Huh? I pulled down in time for a napkin dispenser to fly past the top of his head and crash into the ice next to us. Vincent swerves and pulls his foot away from where the dispenser landed. A loud yell from the stands and the next thing I see, a butter knife cuts through and grazes Vincent's arm, just as the crowd starts yelling in confusion, trying to get off the ring. <laughs> what the? Is there an attack? What are those bodyguards doing? Huh? Someone. It's clearly... Oh, he probably sees an actual crowd of people instead of blue shadows, and one figure dressed in Valentine's Day pink and red. Just as I think this, I lose Leon in the crowd. There are just too many people. It even hides someone as brightly colored as him. Vincent quickly throws an arm over me protectively and tries to follow the crowd out. I see him signaling someone with his other hand, probably his bodyguards. Can they actually see him? <laughs> Where are they? I see a flash of pink again, this time on the other side of Vincent. Um... I yell at Leon. Ah! Leon, stop! Vincent turns just as Leon stops short of stabbing a pocket knife into Vincent's throat. Ugh. Frick! What the heck? Vincent stumbles back to put some space between us as Leon glares back at him. What is going on? Why? By now, most of the crowd has disappeared with authorities coming towards us. <laughs> what? What are you doing here? Like you don't want to talk. You crashed my date! Yeah, well, I didn't try to kill you. You dropped a man into a shark tank. He's on my payroll. What does that have to do with anything? It means I can do whatever I want, pea brain. But there's nothing stopping me from doing what I want either. No, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, this is my date, so shoot before I get someone to shoot you. I can cut your lungs out before I do that. I'm taking it home, you psycho. 
Hell no! Over my dead body! It's not a problem for me. Ah! Both of you, shut up! What are you guys talking about? What do you think you're doing? Aww. You crazy? No, wait. What am I asking? Of course both of you are crazy! But do you really think I'm some ragdoll to drag around as you like? Ah! Not to mention threatening to kill people? What is wrong with you? What's going through your heads? Is there nothing between those ears of yours? I'm tired of waiting for either of you to realize you need to get some goddamn help. Ah! Mean it! Have you guys ever considered going to a therapist? Hmm. For what? Ah! You just admitted to pushing a guy into a shark tank to ruin our day today. And you, Leon, when you try to kill Vincent, he kissed you. Aww. So you try to shank him? You know that's not right, right? No. You can't just kill people because you're upset. What do you think you are? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the only people who do that are evil dictators. Ah! Vincent, shut up! You lecturing him is just a pot calling the kettle black. No. Shouldn't you have learned by now that you can't buy everything in life? Certainly not friends or relationships. <sighs> the world's most expensive helicopter ride isn't going to make me forget you tried to poison me to have me stay by your side. No. Money doesn't make me forgive you. Well, then, how can I? Do better! Both of you! I'm done. I'm sick and I'm done with everything. I pan for air after my outburst. Finally, everything around me starts to come into focus. The crowd of blue shadows I've ignored all this time murmur as they circle to watch the show. Leon and Vincent are looking down remorsefully for once. Go to goddamn therapy! I can't deal with this anymore! I stumble off the ice and away from both of them. It's only when I'm tugging the skates off in the locker room that I realize... Frick. Oh, no. What did I just do? Oh, you got home before me. Yeah, where were you? The mall. You had a date too? <laughs> yeah, I was out with some friends. How were your dates? Uh, Did it not go well? Are you okay? He hurried to take a seat next to me as I buried my face in my hands. I'm freaking terrified. Oh no. I think I might die tomorrow. Huh? What? You're not feeling well. No, no. no. Uh, forget I say anything. I was just exaggerating everything. Night, right, little bro. I turn and walk into my bedroom. There's no point in involving him in this. It's not like I can use him for a meat shield when they come for me. But I feel like I probably got through to them. I open my eyes to a soft morning, sunshine filtering through the curtains of my room. It's great to wake up naturally and not due to an alarm. <sighs> so quiet. Right. What reason would there be to be loud? I live on my own. Let out a yawn and push myself up from bed. The air is crisp in the February morning. It's so peaceful. Oh, huh? I'm still here. I survived all the events of the game. Why am I still here? Hmm. I guess from what happened last night, nothing has been settled. I'm being too hopeful. Look at the alarm clock. I find that it's a little past noon. Aww. I stayed up half the night due to anxiety. Take a peek outside my door. I'm greeted by silence. It's still a little dark from the lack of windows in this part of the apartment. On the hallway from me, my brother's room remains closed. Even further down is the master bedroom that's open. But it's been dark the whole time I've been here. What was it? My parents are on vacation or something all the time? I guess Isekai didn't fix that part of the game to make it more realistic. Everything looks fine out there. I retreat back to my room. What more do I have to do here? Perhaps I finally have time to think about my situation. I take a seat at my desk and pull out a notebook to write my thoughts down. Aww. I don't really have anything further back than two weeks ago. I still haven't been able to find the main character's name. If I'm actually stuck in this body, in this life forever, so I just make up a new name for myself? Wait, if I'm free from the Yandere's, I technically can go wherever I want. I can just disappear, change my name, and well, I can't go back to my old life, but and can get as close as possible. Heck, why bother? It's not like there's much I... Wait, what? There are things I still wanted to do. Well, before I worry about that, I should actually check if I'm free of Yandere's, even if it doesn't make that much sense that the date ended so abruptly like that. I grab my phone with the intent to check for text messages to find three voicemail messages. Checking the call history, two of them are from Leon and one's from Vincent. All three were sent to me at some point in the middle of the night. 
This does not bode well. I listen to Leon's message. I click on Leon's first message. Oh. Hi. Uh, frick. Huh? Okay. I click on a second message from him. Uh. Hey, sorry about the last message. I panicked. I hear him take a deep breath in the recording. Somehow I can picture him sitting all alone, holding the phone nervously to his ear as he plays with the charms on his necklace. I can hear the sound of a train running on tracks in the background. I'm actually... How do I... I'm really sorry about tonight. Well, probably last night by the time you get this message. Huh? Leon? I thought about what I did. About my whole life, really. Uh, maybe not that much. So much to think about it. It's only been a few hours. So much to be sorry for. Uh, just the past two weeks. Oh. Every time I think about it, I just hate myself. So I stopped thinking about it. I force it to the back of my mind until I just forget about it. Then I do the same thing. I hurt you. I hurt mom and dad. I make the same mistakes over and over again. I mean, I... I hear what sounds like a sob. I really thought that after meeting you, things would be better. But the truth is, I only cast it aside like I've always done. I never change. The past two weeks have shown that. Oh, so why does my character look so done? <laughs> oh. I truly am really sorry. I know, or rather... Don't expect you to forgive me, but I hope someday you will. I'm gonna stay away from you until I earn it. Huh? Wait, where's he going? Take care of advice. I'm going to a hospital where he'll watch over me and provide therapy and uh I guess that's it. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at ending voice messages and and I shouldn't even have, but it's not like I can back out mid recording. I'm just sorry about everything. Bye. What do you wanna do? Guess I'll save it? No. Wow, what? I clicked without thinking much. Wait, is that a question dark to me rather than a thought of my own? I shake my head, no matter. I click on Vincent's message. Hmm. I'm greeted by silence. Is this a prank? Hmm. Hey, uh, how are you? Yeah, take it. Take it that you didn't have such a fun time yesterday, huh? Feel bad about that. I hear soft thud like he dropped onto a bed or couch. Mm -hmm. You have to believe me. I really, 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 really meant well. I know. I know intentions don't matter at all. If all I did was hurt you and make you feel miserable. <laughs> I realize that now, last two weeks must have been awful for you. <laughs> and I want to make it up for you. Believe me. I thought about taking you on a better date. I am more roses. Even consider treating Leon to lunch. <sighs> I do realize this is... Everything you were angry about. I can't buy a forgiveness, and it's much worse if I manipulated you into thinking you forgave me. Same goes for friendship and love. Hmm. Vincent, I sh should stop beating around the bush. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Huh. <laughs> Congrats on being the first man to get me to genuinely apologize. Yeah, I know. Doesn't sound really meaningful if I say it like that. I promise. I did think about that. About... Oh, I can apologize, and I realize I can only do that if it's if it's no longer me. Huh? What's he talking about? You're right. So I think the only way I can be worthy of forgiveness if is if I get some help for well everything. I mean, I don't even know where to start. See, so I hear the sound of the car door closing. I'm going to be gone for a while, so you don't have to worry about me bothering you. But if you ever want to see me, I'm at a hospital a little outside the city. I could text you the... I mean, you'll, be, you'll easily be able to find it online. It's the nicest one in the whole state, so you don't have to worry. I'll be fine. Well, that's it. I'm not asking you to visit me, but I hope you will. I'll see you later. Bye. Saving. I, no. No, oh, I clicked without thinking much. Is that a question directed at me, or a thought of my own? I shake my head. No matter. After hearing their messages, I stare at my phone for several minutes, trying to make sense of it all. Huh? Does this mean I won? Whoa! Holy freak, we got two Yandere's to finally go for therapy! <laughs> anyway, that was Help, I'm Stuck in a Yandere Visual Novel. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. And of course, I will be back once the game has a full release, where hopefully we can get the true ending and like... Eh, Curious to see like which route we'll go on uh, at the end of this. But anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you 
in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.